Here we're going to look at a nice and quick integral that involves some really important mathematical constants. And we're going to use a couple of tools that we have developed in previous videos. So the first one is the Gaussian integral. So that's the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus x squared dx. And that's equal to the square root of pi. So I've actually done this in a couple of videos. Uh, the most recent one was where I did it with the squeeze theorem. And then next, we're going to use the fact that the real part of 1 plus 2i is equal to the square root of phi, where phi is the golden ratio. And again, I did that in a previous video as well. So I'll let you guys check those out. So here we want to look at the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus x squared times cosine of 2x squared dx. Okay, and we're going to do this by passing this cosine function into a complex exponential. And then after we do that, we have a simpler integration to do. So let's maybe recall that this cosine of 2x squared is the real part of e to the i times 2x squared. And that's from using Euler's formula, which says e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. So here our real part is just the cosine theta. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. Well, we're in luck because e to the minus x squared is always real. So we can actually bring this e to the minus x squared inside. So that gives us the real part of the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus x squared and then plus i times 2x squared dx, where I've used exponent rules to combine those two exponential objects. Okay, now next up, I wanna maybe factor a minus sign out of the exponent there, just to put it more in line with something like this over here. So that's gonna give us the real part, and then we have the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus one minus two i times x squared dx. So what did I do there? In the exponent, I factored a minus one out of the left-hand side, and I factored an x squared out of the right-hand side. Now I wanna simplify this integral using a u substitution. So the u substitution that I will use here will be u equals the square root of one minus two i times x. Okay, but that means that du equals the square root of one minus two i dx, but that tells us that this object right here, dx, is one over the square root of one minus 2i times du, and then this whole thing right here will be u squared by our substitution. And then the bounds of integration don't change because as x approaches infinity, u does as well, and as x approaches negative infinity, so does u. Okay, especially after taking the real part. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. Here we'll have the real part of one over the square root of one minus two times i, and then the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus u squared du. But we see that this object right here is just the Gaussian integral, so we might as well use that. So we can replace this entire thing with the square root of pi. But the square root of pi is a real number, so we can factor that out. And we have the square root of pi times the real part of this object. But I'm gonna go ahead and rationalize the denominator here. I shouldn't say rationalize the denominator. I'm gonna multiply by the complex conjugate of this stuff that's on the inside to make some sort of simplification happen. So the complex conjugate of this thing on the inside will be one plus two i. So we wanna multiply by that, but it's all under the square root like this. So let's see, that's gonna give us the square root of one plus two i, and then in the denominator, and then in the denominator, we'll have one squared plus four squared, or the square root of five. Notice that that is still under a radical. Okay, now, now next we can bring this radical five out, leaving us with the square root of pi over five times the real part of the square root of one plus two i, 
But then again, by that previous video that I talked about, we know that that is the square root of pi. So that means we can replace this entire thing with the square root of phi. Now putting this all together, we have the square root of pi times phi over five. And that's a good place to stop.